creating uh, rapids. Pretty cool. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Bonjour, privet, hola, ciao to my foreign friends. And in case you wonder why I say that, 50% of my viewership is outside of the United States. And so a lot of people watch my channel that, um, you know, I just want, I really appreciate um, people watching my channel. And that's my way of thanking foreign um, visitors to my channel is uh, trying to relate a little bit to them. So anyhow, um, <clears throat> today we're going to be talking about the history of uh, Bowie knives. And the reason is I uh, was uh, watching YouTube this morning. Tobias Gibson uh, put a video out on his interpretation of Bowie knives. And, you know, basically, you know, to him, Bowie knives are these really big, magnificent, awesome uh, cutters. And uh, with a nice clip point blade, nine inches or better, I think is what he said. Uh, and um, so, you know, that prompted me to do this. I've been working on this video for four years. And... Um, what started it was this knife here, and and so this is a Mark II style knife. Uh, it is made by K Bar, and it is um, you know uh, reminiscent of my Marine Corps K Bar. And so uh, when I went into the Marine Corps, I actually used one of these knives, and I liked them. And um, you know even though it has a uh, large blade on it, it's very nimble and light in hand, and uh, uh, has a great utility design that you can use in a lot of different ways. But if you look at this, the description of it, it on uh, websites, it says it has a Bowie style blade. And so I just never really uh, bought that. You know, I, I uh, you know, this is a design that was uh, made in the uh, 1940s and it looks a lot like, uh, you know, 1940-style um, hunting knives, and I just never bought that. You know, I was 100% uh, on board with uh, Tobias that, yeah, to me, that's what a Bowie-style knife looks like right there, you know, or something similar to that. And so um, I started researching. I got some books. I read a lot, um, did a lot of Internet research on it. And so uh, that's what I'm going to share with you guys today is kind of the um, the history. Um, not so much of the Jim Bowie story, although we'll cover a little bit of that. But the whole history of Bowie knives from inception to now is what I'm going to try to cover in a short period of time. And so uh, that said, Really, the story begins way before the 1800s, okay? And so we're going to go back to the late 1600s and this knife right here. And if you look at this knife, you would probably say, hey, that's just a butcher knife. And you'd be right, because this is uh, one out of my butcher block. And this is a butcher knife. And if you look at these, they're um, very similar knives, very similar. Okay, butcher style knife. And so <clears throat> the reason that this knife is important is these were uh, brought into the United States uh, by the barrel full, literally by the barrel. Um, uh, probably millions of these knives in between the 1600s and 1800s entered the United States. And um, this is a style knife that would have been carried uh, west of the Appalachians by fur uh, trappers and, and uh, mountaineers. Um, this is the kind of knife that they carried, uh, regardless of what you see in movies. And so um, up until around the um, middle of the 1700s, the British had prohibited um, um, people in the States, their citizens, from 
going past the Appalachians because they didn't want to stir up trouble with the Indians. And so uh, also the French were to the north around Lake Huron in the uh, Great Lakes area. And so they didn't want to uh, stir up trouble. But um, people that did go trapping uh, used this style knife right here. So it figures prominently in the uh, Bowie story. story. These knives were anywhere between 4 and 16 inches long. So they got quite, um, quite big. And the other knife that figures prominently, which comes from around the same time period, is this knife here. If you don't recognize this knife, it is a rifleman's knife. And so these were large bayonet style uh, knives um, that were that were produced uh, f um, from the um, Revolutionary War all the way up into the late 1860s. They were popular and um, a lot of them were really big, 18, 21 inches. This is a 12 inch model here so you can imagine how big uh you know an 18 inch model would be and um let me just show you here real quick this is harold uh, peterson's book and there is a uh, picture if you you see that knife on the uh soldier's side that is a rifleman's knife and that is absolutely huge and so the reason um <clears throat> this is important is i think after the revolutionary war uh guys went home and they had blacksmith um and knife makers produce a knife uh like the rifleman knife this variety is 12 inches it's smaller than what a rifleman's knife would have been like, but this particular knife um, was found in the um, in the southwest and is in a museum in the um, in Arizona, I think. And it is a um, exact replica of that knife that's in the museum, and it is a rifleman's knife. So it was popular all the way uh, past the uh, Civil War. Big knife. Big, sturdy knife, good for camp work, good for self-defense. And that's exactly uh, why they had these, because at that period in time, the uh, rifles, black powder rifles only, sh or flintlocks and black powder rifles only fired one shot. And so you you could get off about three, three shots in 10 seconds, but eventually you were going to end up hand-to-hand. -hand. And um, they weren't carrying swords then except for officers. And so they needed a bigger knife uh, for camp purposes and for self-defense, and this was it. And so both of these knives, this knife and this knife, I think had an influence in producing uh, Bowie knives. And so um, by the time you get to the 1800s, you know, uh, Bowie-style knives with big blades were uh, getting uh, prominent and a lot of people were using them the reason being is um in that time period is really where the great westward expansion takes place between 18 uh, 1800 and 1860 the civil war and so the united states is expanding westward and uh past the uh, mississippi it was a no man's land there were a lot of lawlessness, a lot of bad characters, not to mention a lot of angry Native Americans trying to defend their homeland. And so you you really needed a um, a big knife to back up the fact that your uh, black powder pistol had one shot. And so um, in the 1800s, uh, these are probably the predominant knives, and this knife looks kind of small. Um, this is a Dirk style knife. It actually dates to the 1900s, but this is what they, a lot of them look like. They were um, spear point and dagger style blades and very popular in the 1800s. And then they start getting bigger. And so let me get back to my Bowie knife here. Let's see. My, uh, if you get back to this K bar, 
when you look at this knife by itself, it looks kind of small, but when you put it up to the K bar, it's not all that small. Okay, it's a pretty big blade. And so uh, people were carrying these concealed and they they were um, similar to naval dirks. And that's what this would be called as a dirk more than a um, dagger. And so after the uh, 1800s, you get into 1820s, they start getting bigger and bigger. This is a really uh, popular style here. I just did a video on it. And uh, this was carried by, this is a replica of a Thai cheese knife, a Cherokee Indian chief. But this knife was um, produced by Gravely and Weeks in, um, out of Sheffield, England. This is a reproduction. It's not a real one. And so um, it would have had uh, um, silver pens, a skew on silver, the butt plate silver, and the collar silver. And um, you can see it's a different kind of style. This upswept style here was very popular with Native Americans. Oftentimes they would cut knives down to, to produce this style if the knife wasn't produced in that style. And this really starts that period. You know, you're looking at 18, um, 1820s. Of the knives getting bigger. This is a, a nine and a half inch blade right here, I believe, or nine and three quarters. And um, here's another one. This is, um, let's see, uh, Frank Cover and Johnny English, I think his name was. Johnny English uh, produced this knife out of Philadelphia. A really um, kind of famous knife. And this is a reproduction. But they did fine uh, pin work here. Nice handle on here. It was all silver embossed. And this is a large blade, 12 inch blade. And typical Bowie knives in that 1830 period right here. And so they were pretty big. Sometimes bigger than that. Uh, usually around that 9 to uh, 13 inches, I think. So, in... in um, 1827, a cat named Jim Bowie gets into a fight in a um, at a sandbar. And they went to the sandbar because they were fighting a duel and it was illegal at the time. So two groups of people go to this uh, duel. And they're kind of enemies of each other and they get in a big fight. Jim Bowie ends up getting shot multiple times, stabbed multiple times, but he kills several people. Uh, by some accounts, three to four people using a large um, butcher style knife. So remember the butcher knife, okay? So big knives up until that sandbar uh, fight were called butcher style knives, okay? Butcher style knives. Because a butcher knife was one of the biggest knives that you could uh, get your hands on. And so... In that sandbar fight, <clears throat> like uh, CNN covered it, Fox News, it was national news. It became really big. And so people started going to uh, cutlers and blacksmiths saying, I want a Bowie style knife, which nobody really knew what Jim Bowie's knife would look like. It was never pictured. But his uh, brother, Rosin, produced a knife for him. And in an interview, he said that the knife was a large, nine and a half inch long, two inch wide Bowie knife that was a quarter of an inch deep and had a coffin style, coffin style handle on it, no hilt. So if you look at this knife right here, um, this is a large butcher style knife. Rosin said it was a butcher style knife with the clip cut off right here. Clip cut off, but large butcher style knife. I think this knife here is one of the best representations of, of Jim Bowie's knife, except for the fact of this handle right here. So Jim Bowie's knife had a, um, coffin style 
handle on it like this right here so imagine this knife with this handle on it um daniel boone's knife is in a museum in north carolina it looks exactly like this other than the fact that it has a coffin style handle it looks exactly like uh what uh, jim Bowie's knife would have looked like and that's based on the description by his brother who had the knife produced for him and so that's what I think uh, Jim Bowie's knife looked like. As far as all the um, different kind of descriptions of Bowie knives, I think you have to remember that that Bowie knives uh, were just large bladed knives. Um, they look different in different areas. So Louisiana style Bowie knives had a, a Spanish flair to them. Knives from the uh, Great Lakes had a French kind of uh, flair to them. Um, you have the Arkansas toothpick, which is basically a, a dagger style. You have the Confederate style in the South, which is very large. So all these different blade geometries were present in Bowie knives. Um, and the knives weren't always big, so a lot of them... Um, were in the um, uh, six to se seven, eight, nine, eight inch range. They were they were uh, like this knife right here. So they were a lot smaller. And so, in one of the best collections of Bowie knives I've ever seen, it was pretty much an even mix of large and small knives. And so I don't think Bowie knives were were just um, all huge, right? I think sometimes they were uh, smaller besides that. And um, so I want to move on and show you um, this knife. This is this knife has a uh, what's called a Mediterranean blade. It's a leaf style blade that sweeps up, thin collar, and it has a bird's head uh, um, pommel on it. And this style here is very reminiscent of the Spanish influence. Remember, um, you know, we shared the border with Mexico and there was a large Spanish influence there. And this this is another replica knife based on one that's in a, in a museum. <clears throat> and I'm showing you that for a reason, because as we move on into the um, 1840s and above 1860s, you get this style blade here. Now, this is a Musso Bowie, and I think uh, most people have concluded that this knife is is um, not from antiquity. It was produced in England in the 18, or 1960s. Several of them came into the United States. But knives like these uh, are uh, representative of... Um, what they call Texas uh, Bowie. So Texas Bowie's uh, had this large, very wide, up to four inches <coughs> in width, and were very reminiscent of the um, of the uh, uh, Confederate Bowie. And then they had this uh, huge um, clip blade right here, which is called a Texas clip. Sometimes this came all the way down to the blade, sometimes in the middle, sometimes it swept up like on this one. And these were very popular um, in the Southwest. So they spread out from um, Texas into Arizona, Nevada, up into uh, Montana in the, north, uh, the Northwest. And they were very popular. And... Um, and so this is a style Bowie, I think, where we get the huge clip from that we see today. It's called a Texas clip. And uh, let's see. Here's another example here. This is a little smaller. It's a modern Bowie, but it has that large Texas clip in here. And um, that's where this comes from, is that Texas, uh, Texas Bowie. And a lot of Bowie's had uh, bone handles, too, by the way. This is genuine stag, elk stag, on this knife right here. So, what happened to these huge 
knives, these tremendously big, uh, formidable, awesome blades, why do they go away? And, you know, in, in the past 15 years, they've made a huge comeback. A lot of guys are sporting these big blades around, but <clears throat> they had kind of disappeared in the, in the uh, 20th century. So <clears throat> the reason for that was this right here. The uh, 1873 Colt six gun. So remember when we started we, this, we were talking about single shot uh, rifles and pistols. And so those were the, especially the pistols were notoriously inaccurate. A lot of times they didn't even go off. And so um, people felt they needed a big blade. And after uh, 1873, and the advent of this uh, six gun, you have six bullets, easily, quickly reloadable. Kind of the need for these these huge knives just went away, right? You don't need to. For one thing, if you've ever carried one of these knives, they're heavy. Not only are they heavy, but if you're carrying them on your side, they get caught on branches and limbs and all kinds of things when you're walking through the woods. And so those start going away, and we start getting this knife right here, which you would recognize as a um, um, a W49, the um, um, Western model 49 bowie this this that's what this is and really what this is is a western style bowie so this bowie knife comes from the texas bowie if you look at them they're very similar it's just like uh, this bowie got chopped down a little bit and what you get is this bowie right here now this one's about eight inches and that's probably, you know, pretty much, they were between seven and nine inches, the Western Bowies, in the, in the 1870s. And then um, by the 1890s, um, you know, you didn't have a lot of trapping anymore in the mountains. And so the, you, 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 the, there's a lot of law and, and civilization is coming to the West. And so it's, you just don't have the need for these huge uh, knives anymore. And so they start uh, gravitating down to this knife. This is a Joseph Allen knife from the 1890s. And, you know, it looks very similar to the modern hunt, hunting knife. And this is where we get the modern hunting knife right here. And so you can see a little modern hunting knife right there. It has a nice clip on it. But um, that's what happened to the uh, the Bowie knife, is that 1873 Colt. And then uh, this is a seven and a, a three quarter inch blade. Same style, you know, that, that um, Western style blade on it. And that's really popular now. And what we think of when we think of Bowie's, it's what I used to think of when I... Uh, used to think of bow bowies but the reality is there were a lot of a um, lot of different um, blade geometries a lot of different handle shapes uh, round there were dagger blades spear point blades um, big wide confederate bowies it just kind of depended on uh, where you were at and even like this knife right here this is a um, a Bowie style knife. It's an eight and a half inch blade on this knife and it has a, a cutlery. These are called a cutlery handled uh, Bowie knives. This one doesn't date to the 1860s. It, it dates to the 1900s and um, but these existed in the 1860s and were popular cutlery handle style Bowies. So Anyhow, that's what happened to them. You know, they just, uh, we didn't need those big knives anymore. And so, um, I know this video was kind of long. But, um, to answer the question that we originally asked, is this a Bowie-style knife, uh, blade? Yeah, it is. You know, if you look at this blade in comparison with this blade right here, they look very similar. 
And so Bowie, um, um, a Bowie style blade just means big. And if you, if you don't think this is too big, it's actually six and three quarter inches. If you don't think that's too big, just strap that onto your side and walk through them all and see the results you're going to get. It, you're going to get a lot of looks and maybe even stopped uh, by security. You know, this is a six inch blade. That's a seven, six and three quarter inch blade right there. So they are pretty big, you know. So, yeah, that is a Bowie style blade, I'd say. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it informative. I know it was kind of long, but there's a lot of history and a lot of stuff to go over. I really appreciate you guys for uh, supporting the channel. Uh, if you'd like to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. Have a great day, guys.